Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with the third and final part of my October wrap-up. I will link parts one and two down below, as well as content warnings, links, everything else I mention. And the first book I read in this part of the wrap-up was The Little Prince. Wait, this side. <laughs> the Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I apologize so deeply for my French. Um, and this is translated by Irene Testot Ferry. Um, so this is a very, very short children's classic that um, I had never read. Like, I just never read it when I was younger. Um, and I'm glad I finally read it. We are following a, like, this man who um, his, I think, like, airplane crashed or something in the desert and so he's trying to repair it and while there he meets this little boy um, who he calls the little prince and um, the little prince just talks to him about his adventures like the other planets that he's been his home planet um, missing home the things that he's learned other places so there's a lot of like life lessons um, and I was really enjoying this for like most of it um, I was it was just like really lovely and I do think that some of the things it was talking about were really thoughtful um, it's funny because I recently read the alchemist and and that is like, you know, a, a serious adult philosophical allegorical kind of book. And I feel like The Little Prince actually, in, mi in much fewer pages, did a lot more interesting and profound things. Um, but then like the ending happened and like, did the thing that I think happened actually happen? Because if so, I can't believe this is a kid's book <laughs> and that this is so beloved as like a, like a story for children. I don't know. I just have questions about that. So I'm tentatively at like three and a half stars, but... I, I don't know. I just, like, it would have been four stars without that ending. And I just, maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but, um, yeah, I, again, I have questions. Next, I finished Garlic and the Witch by Brie Paulson. This is a sequel to Garlic and the Vampire, which I read last year and absolutely adored. Um, so this is a graphic novel. We are following our main character, Garlic. Let me show you her. So there's garlic. Um, the art style is adorable and I absolutely love this. I do think I like the first volume a tiny bit more, but I still gave this five stars. It is so cute and wholesome and lovely. I love the messages in this one about change and how like, you know, trying to be okay with change even when it's scary. Um, I love the friendships. I, um, I found like the kind of central like issue or conflict in this one really interesting. Um, yeah, like I just, I love this series so much. Um, this one does definitely end off on a good point, but I would read like a zillion of these. So I hope Brie Wilson keeps writing more. Um, yeah, I gave Garlic and the Witch five stars. Absolutely loved it. Um, it just, this series just makes me so happy. Next, I finished The Glass Witch by Lindsay Puckett. This is a very short middle grade novel um, and we are following our main character. Um, Adelaide or Addie um, and the women in her family are all witches um, except that Adelaide hasn't really gotten her powers or like they're not really as impressive as they're supposed to be so she feels really self-conscious about that um, and she's also as you can see from the cover plus sized and she deals a lot with like like low self like low self-esteem and kind of negative self-talk um, throughout the book we do see her um, coming to accept her body more but just to be aware that that is a, a prominent element in this one um, and actually the women of her family kind of under a curse or a bargain where there can never be three of them within the city limits at the same time. Um, so her and her mother are going to visit their grandmother and they have everything all worked out where they won't break the curse uh, or they won't like trigger the curse. Um, but then Adelaide decides to get back at her mother because her mother is like leaving her here and she, her and her mom have a very complicated relationship in some ways. Um, Adelaide makes a split second decision that triggers the curse and kind of um, sets these really bad things in motion and so now she and her new friend Fatima have to figure out um, how to stop this. Um, there's a lot about like family and like family relationships and um, like accepting yourself and loving yourself and I did like this overall. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as I was hoping to. Um, I didn't love some of the writing choices and even some of the plot choices including kind of like the inciting incident although I will say that that is something in general I can have a hard time with in books where like the main plot gets kicked off with with like a very obvious stupid decision and before you say that's in a lot of books it's actually not in as many as you think like I know it is kind of a common thing but there's a particular kind of like hey I've been told my whole life that this thing would be really bad but I'm gonna have a tantrum and do the bad thing anyway and like I know that Adelaide is a kid so I understand but I didn't love that that was what kicked off most of the story um as I said I did really enjoy Fatima and their friendship I love that Fatima is like super girly and also super into spooky things like I thought that was like that combination I feel like is not something we see a lot Beautifully Bookish Bethany did mention in her review that there might be some divided feelings among Muslim readers about how Fatima's um beliefs may conflict with some 
some of the like magic things happening in this book so do look into that if that is something that um might be an issue for you i haven't seen uh, muslim reviewers talking about this book specifically so i liked the friendship i liked the themes of family and acceptance but like I was saying, I did have some issues with it as well. I also, I didn't like the choice that we got chapters from the villain's perspective. Um, that's just something in general I don't tend to like in stories, but especially for this one, I didn't like the way those were written. Um, they felt very, like, like, I don't know, weirdly overdramatic, like, in the writing style and everything, and, like, it did definitely add to, like, the spookiness, but I just didn't enjoy reading them because the writing just felt so over the top to me. Anyway, I had, like, mixed feelings about this, but I'm very glad I read it, very glad this book exists, and I gave The Glass Witch 3.5 stars. Next, I finished Galatea by Madeline Miller. Um, this is a very tiny short story. This is the really beautiful UK edition, um, and this is a retelling of the story of Galatea from Greek mythology, um, but through a feminist lens. Um, and I thought this was fantastic. I don't want to get into too much of the story or even like my thoughts on it because it is so short, um, but I thought this was very, very effective. Like it really interrogates the original myth and what that says about um, men and women and like what it says about um, like women's role in society and the way like that women are like idealized. The story does deal with um, some quite difficult issues. It doesn't show things on page, um, but be sure to check content warnings if you're concerned about that. And um, I also just found this very moving in terms of the mother-daughter relationship. And um, I was very attached to Galatea as a character, even though this is so short. Um, and I also am impressed with like how this book can deal with really difficult things in a way that doesn't kind of sensationalize them. And I think that was because Galatea, who's like telling the story, her tone is very like matter of fact and I think that a few things happened as a result of that that I think really like helped the story. Um, for one thing, I think having that kind of tone kept it from feeling overwhelming with the amount of like, you know, dark things that this story deals with. Um, but I think it also was some interesting commentary. Like she's so matter of fact about these things, like this is just the way that the world is, this is just the way her husband is, that I think even having that straightforward narration style, I think really contributed to how effective and powerful this story was. So I gave it 4.5 stars, but like this might end up being a five star later. Like I think this is a really fantastic short story and I'm very glad I read it. Next, I finished Godmersham Park by Jill Hornby. Um, I have a whole spoiler-free review on this book, so I will link that down below, um, but I did receive this copy in exchange for an honest review and this is inspired by true events and true people. Um, actually, all of the events that happened in this book we know did happen because of written records, um, but kind of the like motivation and some of the things around that the author filled in. Um, but we are following the governess for um, Edward Austin's family. So Jane Austen had her siblings. Edward Austen is one of her brothers and he and his wife and their children, um, they're like this household that hires this governess whose name is Anne Sharp and she is our main character. Um, and again, check out my review, but very briefly, I really enjoyed this. Um, I loved the writing and I just found this a very compelling story, even though it is very quiet and very character focused. Um, I can see this not being as compelling for, you know, more plot focused readers, but um, I just found it very interesting. I love the way that we learned so much about what it was like to be a governess at this time period. Um, even though Anne was not always my favorite character to follow, I think that this is a really interesting character study. Um, like I said, I really liked some of the uh, commentary, like the discussion of class and privilege. I do feel like I wanted a little more from some of the supporting characters, um, and there were also some writing choices regarding the supporting characters that made them kind of blend together a little bit. Like they all talked in, like the women especially talked in very similar ways, but I did really enjoy this. Um, it was great to see Jane Austen as a character in this, and I gave Godmersham Park four stars. Um, I also want to mention, and I go into this in the review as well, um, but the synopsis is a tiny bit misleading for this book. The synopsis makes it sound like the main conflict is that there is maybe this forbidden attraction between Anne and Henry Austen, um, who is one of Jane Austen's other brothers who like comes to visit and like that does happen but that is definitely not like the central idea of the book um so do keep that in mind but yeah I really enjoyed this and then finally the last book I finished in the month of October is The Girl in White by Lindsay Curry um this is a spooky middle grade book we are following our main character Mallory um who lives in a town called Eastport which is known as the most cursed town in America there's all these like ghost stories um and legends about like horrible things that have happened here tragic things and the town really makes a lot of like money off of that um it's like a real like tourist town for being very spooky and supposedly very haunted. Um, and Mallory has never believed in any of that, and she's also 
just never liked that like fixation from this town. Um, like she's kind of the only one who's not super into all the spooky stuff and she's only lived there about a year or two but she's already sick of it. But near the beginning of the book something happens where it seems like um, one of the ghosts uh, in this town might actually be real and she might actually be coming for Mallory or trying to get Mallory to help her in some way. Um, and so she and her new friend Joshua and then a couple of her older friends, Brianna and who is her other friend? Emmy. Um, the four of them kind of are trying to figure out what um, Sweet Molly, this like apparition, like what she wants, like try, first off trying to figure out if she even is real, um, what's going on here, what she wants, and how they can um, give Molly what she wants and like, you know, give her peace if they can so that she doesn't um, put everyone in the town in danger. Um, and I ended up really liking this. Um, the atmosphere was really good, like the spookiness I really enjoyed, um, but my favorite thing about this book I think was the themes and like the way that the main point or the main like plot of this book is like based on the idea like this book talks a lot about like the sensationalizing and the commodifying of tragedy and of suffering and that is something I feel very strongly about and that I've been thinking about a lot lately um especially with some of the documentaries and things that have come out and I really love that this book directly tackles that um I love that that was such an important part of this book I love just yeah that was like my favorite thing about this book is the way it handled those things um, I did want a little more like character development from Mallory uh, especially like even in a book that is so strong on like the spookiness and the atmosphere um, I do still like to have some character development so that was a little bit of a letdown and I also feel like the ending could have been um, there could have been a little more time spent on it um, but overall I really enjoyed this especially as I said with the way the uh, spookiness combined with the themes and I gave The Girl in White four stars. Okay everybody so those were the rest of the books I read in October. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these or if you're going to pick them up. Um, also, fun fact, <laughs> I think this is so weird, all of the books except the first one I talked about today, The Little Prince, all of the books started with G. Um, like not including the word the. I don't understand why that happened but I think that's very interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!